Okay, we're going to now talk about imaginary and complex numbers. And if you remember, when we talked about the square root of, let's say, negative 16, we said this was not a real number because the radicand of an even can't be negative, of an even, of an even root. And so we left it alone. We said, well, we're just going to say it's not a real number and be done with it for now. Well, now we're ready to talk about it. We're going to talk specifically about square roots of negative numbers. And we're going to also look at this from the other side. So we know that any real number squared is positive. We can't have a negative square root or negative underneath the square root sign. Can't take the square root of a negative number. There we go. So it makes sense, though, to talk about this. Square root of negative 1. And so we're going to create a new symbol. Well, we're going to use an existing one. But we're going to label the letter i as being the square root of negative 1. That means that negative 1 is equal to i squared. And these two pieces of information are going to be incredibly important to us as we go forward in this section. So, with these in mind, we can now talk about the complex number system. And a complex number system is written as a plus bi, where the a is the real part, and b is the imaginary part. And we know that it's imaginary because it has the imaginary symbol, the i. And we always want to write this separately as a plus bi. We don't ever want to combine these together and include them all at once. So, for instance, this is not a valid complex number. 2 plus 3i over 3. We would rather have it 2 over 3 plus 3 over 3i, which would then be 2 over 3 plus i. Now, in chapter 7, they kind of skip that a little bit, but for the most part, especially in 6.8, this is the appropriate answer, not this. So let's actually talk about evaluating, then. What is the square root of negative 16? Well, we take the negative sign underneath, and it becomes an i on the outside. And so then we have i square root of 16. Well, square root of 16 is, we know, 4. So our final answer is 4 i. In other words, the square root of negative n is equal to i square roots of n. So you just do the same thing you would if the negative wasn't there and attach an i on it. And notice I'm writing the i in front. It's okay to write it in back. Just make sure that you signify that your radical stops before the i. So the square root of negative 3 would be i square roots of 3, because we can't simplify square root of 3, and the i comes out to represent the negative. The square root of negative 18, well, then i is going to become a negative, uh, become a nine. The negative is going to become a 9. 18 breaks down as 9 and 2. 9 is a perfect square. So this becomes 3i square roots of 2. And finally, the last one that we want to look at, what if we have 3 plus the square root of negative 50? Well, the negative becomes a 9, and 50 is 25 and 2. And the 25 comes out of it, so we get 3 plus square root of 25 is 5i, root 2, because we leave the root 2 inside. And that's how we find and how we evaluate the square roots of negative numbers.